live! But we are also on tape. We are deep down in the bowels of Lee's music. That's the vacationing one. Chris Folds, he's got his nice vest on today. How you doing? Good, good. I'm on vacation this week, but I uh, make time for the show. And you, uh, you had a brain fart this morning on your way to pick me up. I have no rig right now, so Folds was picking me up. You want to share what happened? Yeah, Marty's without vehicle. After the show, actually, we're going to see if we can buy him a Honda with Jack Bell, greatest salesman in town. Uh, we're going to, um, I was supposed to pick you up uh, at your house. up in, You do uh, me a favor. You're going to get me a coffee, too. You're being a nice guy. So I'm, I'm leaving Bachelor and... Marty has a palatial estate up in Sahali, right across town. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll get you get us both a coffee at North Kamloops McDonald's, drive up to pick you up. I got to thinking about work and stuff like that, and I grabbed one coffee for myself, and I'm almost at Lee's door before I realize I got to go up and pick you up. So no, I do the same thing. Sometimes I'll be going to the CBC in the morning, and I'll end up in North Kamloops just driving around listening yeah. to music. So <laughs> big show today. We got your column. You wrote a column about public health orders and the messaging that kind of surround them. So yeah, it's just a column saying that. We understand what they need to do. We understand, we're not saying we're not anti-vaxxers and we're not skeptics, but they need to explain the rationale behind the orders because a lot of the orders don't make sense to the great unwashed. I'm gonna talk about the Camelos Blazers trade deadline. I'm really excited about this interview today as long as he shows up. He's in Mexico right now, Henry Small. He's gonna be our Small. first international guest coming in from Mexico. That's right. I mean, he's gonna talk about his old buddy, Stan Bailey, who, who passed away in December of uh, Stan and Hank fame, CIFM for 25 years ago. That's Ray Jolly Kerr from, from Kamloops uh, sales, this week. Uh, sales manager from Kamloops this week. And this photo was taken by, I think, Dave Eagles. Dave and the Hawk Eagles. On the day that Stan Bailey retired, his last day doing the morning show down at CIFM, uh, they decided to give him a, a, a ride out, as they say. And that was a cool picture that ran in our paper. Um, unfortunately, Stan passed away recently uh, after a long battle with COVID. It looks like they could be going on vacation. You're on vacation right now. And uh, any old stomping ground uh, folds favorite vacation spots growing up? Yeah, when we were kids, we uh, we used to go. Not, not nothing grand. We didn't do you know anything anything rich. But we used to go. <laughs> Why are you pointing? Well, me? <laughs> you're from South Surrey, you know, Newton area. So I used to go to. Um, we used. My dad used to take us. Mom took us to. Uh, it's a weird thing. The Holiday Inn in Bellingham. Uh, often, and we would just go there and rent a room for like a week, and we would jump in the pool and play. And my parents would be in the bar all day. Was Izzy's Pizza there at that time? Remember Izzy's Pizza? No, it's next now? to the Fred Meyer off the off the I five, and uh, it was just, uh, and it's still there. And it's a hotel that has it's all like uh, square, so you look into the courtyard, and it's uh, indoor, and it was kind of neat. Uh, there was one trip though, one trip that was uh, that came to mind based on John Madden's death recently is uh, in uh, 1980, 1981. I was in grade seven. And we took a train from Vancouver to LA and a bus to Vegas for mm -hmm. Christmas. And on the train ride, just past uh, Oakland, uh, John Madden was on the on the. Oh, no and he, he had just retired, and he was uh, doing um, him and Pat Summerall were doing the play-by-play. -play. And it was a, uh, a playoff game, I think. Yeah, playoff game or last game of the season. John Madden was uh, deathly afraid of flying, so he took a train everywhere. So he had to leave early. So um, my brother and I were, were, were sleeping in our seats and uh, my mom and dad, quite tipsy, came and <laughs> woke us up at two in the morning. He said, come here, come here. And they brought us in the bar car and there was John Madden drinking with all of them. Well, and Pat talking. Summerall was a bit of a drinker yeah. too, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, and the funny thing was back then, John Madden was part of those uh, uh, you know, Miller Lite commercials, yeah. but he was drinking something else and my mom was <laughs> all over him on Lacing that. into him. So we got to meet him, got his picture taken. I got some Polaroids there. So that was kind of cool. That was a cool trip back in the day. That's cool. Uh, the Coke reopening, that's a pretty astounding accomplishment for everybody involved, the province and all the workers? It's amazing because we were talking about and the government was talking about we may not be on that road until the spring or summer. Because it's today, of, right? It's today, Wednesday, uh, January 19th. It's opening to regular traffic. There'll be about 45 minute extra delay. So it's basically the same time it would have taken the old um, the old canyon to get from here to Hope. Yeah. Um, and it, it's amazing because of what they've done and they're still working on it as you go around it. But that that whole highway, when they built it in 19, uh, the finish in 80, 85, it was the most remarkable highway ever built in North America. Mm -hmm. They built that thing in 20 months from uh, from Merritt to Hope. 3,000 people were on the job 24 hours a day mm -hmm. and um, they, they it's for Expo. So they got it going. Eh? So it's, it's pretty amazing that they um, they built the highway in historic time. They repaired it in historic time. Let's just hope that it holds up to the next uh, next catastrophe. Magic Mike, business implications in a positive manner for you with that highway opening back up as far as um, freight fees and that kind of thing? Uh, we haven't checked and seen if the freight is going to be any less yet, but uh, it was quite high when it was closed. Um, and this week we're really excited to uh, see some of those freight uh, costs go down. Also, we get a lot of our wood from um, Chilliwack area, the lower mainland. 
So to be able to go there ourselves um, and get it is, uh, is and, and see our vendors, that's, that's really important. And you might need a, a new doorknob shipped up here from what I understand. What's uh, going on with that? Yeah, yeah. somebody uh, decided they wanted to get into our building uh, <laughs> at 5 o'clock in the morning. How many times? They could have just phoned me. I would have let them in and them what's in there. But, you know. They busted a $100 doorknob for no reason whatsoever. Uh, just tries and wakes me up at 5 o'clock. I'm not sure which one I'm more upset about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's good news, the Coquihalla reopening for this guy right here who's back actually and uh, just give him a clap if you can folds please for uh, the work that he did thank you guys he looked after my vehicle when it was in a tow yard when it was in a ditch in Lillooet and uh, now he's back at New Leaf Produce Market and he's here with us check this commercial out right now Happy New Year everybody it's 2022 and we could not have done 2021 without New Leaf Produce Market our beloved title sponsor there's Jen over there working very hard, one of the best employees I've seen in a long, long time. I talked to Herman. He says, Marty, make sure you pump juice January. Well, Herman, your wish is my command, pal. Have a look. Maybe it's the pure apple. Maybe it's the pure pear. Do you like apple and beet? Maybe it's the pure cherry. Maybe you don't like juice. Well, do you like fresh produce? Because I do. Have a look at that. They keep it right. They keep it tight. They keep it fresh and clean at New Leaf Produce Market. I thought it'd be kind of neat to talk about because maybe the average person doesn't know how popular these store opening stories are on our website. I'm always amazed, you know, all these things going on, the Coquihalla, COVID, and then we post a story about Nutters. Nutters Health Food Store coming down to the Old Valley. Nuts. Yes. Well, you know what the number one story, to, to this day, I think it has the most hits until the catastrophes hit, but for the longest time, the number one story on our on our website, most most visited, was it was a story by Jeremy Deutsch, an old reporter we worked with. He wrote a story about Burger King coming back to Kamloops because he was a huge Burger King fan. When they closed in Aberdeen, he went to Vernon once a week to get his big Whopper, uh, his Whopper uh, hit, hit fix. Jeremy Deutsch. Yes. So <laughs> they when they when Burger King said we're coming back to Kamloops, we're opening in Valley View. We did a little story in the paper. It blew up. It, it got more hits because people just love, yeah, they do love the store stuff. What is Nutters? Do you know Nutters, Nutters is? Nutters is a health food store, sort of like a nature's fair, I think. They used to be here. When I first moved to Kamloops in 05, I'm quite sure there was a Nutters in the uh, Columbia uh, Square, um, not far from Toys R Us in there, where I think the Bulk Barn is now. I think that was Nutters back when I first moved here. And they moved away. I think they're coming back, if I stand to be corrected. And they're going to be at the uh, uh, sharing the uh, Value Village building downtown, the old one, with the big little science center. Yeah, that's a big building. And then Nature's Fair is going into the massive into Toys R Us building. Yeah, it's going from 8,000 square feet to 22,000 22, square feet. They're going to be opening next year, 2023. And as far as I know, I'm on vacation this week. But when I left, Toys R Us was saying they're, they're hoping to stay in Kamloops. It was not an economic decision. It was a lease decision. And they're trying to find another space in Kamloops because Toys R Us says they like to be here. So we'll see what happens. Well, the folks at Nature's Fair and Nutters, if you need help with your gas fitting, your refrigerating, your AC units, I know the guys for you, Coal Control Mechanical. There's other people in the same business, so what makes you guys stand out? We're cold as ice. <laughs> <laughs> We're primarily refrigeration contractors servicing the commercial market. Heating, cooling, commercial refrigeration, gas fitting, Kind of a one-stop shop. Well, when you call Cold Control Mechanical, you're getting a personalized feel. You know you're going to get two qualified technicians. We both have our tickets. Who you call and talk to is usually who's going to show up at the door. So, if we can find a solution to your problem. We will. Uh, you know, we're both ambitious guys, and uh, we like to like to get after it. And I mean, more like the jobs you guys have completed with Cold Control, like who you're. Oh, is that what you mean? Okay, we'll leave that out. Eh? Yeah, leave that out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, that's an odd one. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you, you'll edit it and stuff, yeah, I don't know. The confusion around public health orders continues. Uh, we understand the need for them. I think, I think if, if they say we need to do this, I say ex yes, let's do this. But when they, when they seem to be contra contra contradicting themselves, and when you, when you can have like a pub open but not a gym or if you can go to the uh, the TCC and you can walk around the track but you can't run but you can play basketball right next to sweating and grunting yeah. when you can when you can go into the steam room with unlimited number of people but you can't go to the gym and work out in the corner it doesn't make a lot of sense to people and um, you know you can go to the restaurant you have to be vaccinated but your server doesn't have to be vaccinated so there's a lot of just 
uh, m mismanaging the message. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wrote a column saying that uh, if they're going, they sh two things, they've got to be transparent about why they're doing something. And they have to explain the rationale so it, it, it satisfies the doubters because you risk sending some of those vaccine hesitant people who are not anti-vaxxers. Vaccine hesitant people have legitimate concerns about the vaccine. You have to get to them with education. But if you continue to confuse people, you run the risk of sending a, a rational vaccine hesitant person mm -hmm. into that wacky world of anti-vaxxers. Yeah, we should probably highlight again, because you made the point at the end of your column that you're saying that uh, you're pro-vaccine and everything. You and I were talking about Stan Bailey as an example yep. this morning, because here's a guy, he had a kidney transplant, yes. right? And yes. then he caught COVID and it was co comorbidities. Is the, yeah, comorbidities, uh, underlying conditions. Yeah, like 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 uh, Henry said yesterday, Dr. Henry said yesterday, uh, with the Omicron especially, it's it's a milder version, but it's it spreads more. So the, the, she says overwhelmingly, all the data has shown that if you're over 70, you're most at risk. Yeah. If you're under 70 and you have no comorbidities, you have no other issues, you're probably going to be okay if you're vaccinated. So get vaccinated. And if you do get vaccinated, but you do have diabetes or you've had a kidney transplant or you have other issues, you got to be a little careful. Yeah. I mean, because I, I know I'm getting to that point where I'm just getting swept up. I'm like, hey, let's open it up. Let's go. It's not, you know, it's not, this one's not that bad for you. And then you have to think a little bit about, well, <laughs> you know, if you're 74 yeah. years old, it is, it could be still it, bad for you. It all depends on who you are, whether it's bad for you and whether or not you're passing on to someone who yeah. might be bad for so the bottom line was just, you know, I think the government needs to just, uh, it, and it's a constructive criticism. We understand the need for health orders. We understand the need to, to bear through it. Mike's bearing through with his business. Yes, he, I'm sure he understands why, but it gets frustrating the longer it goes on. Mm -hmm. But I think it would go a long way if they would just explain it better because so, people are calling us and saying, well, how come I can do this, but I can't do this? They need to explain why that is the data. Uh, one thing uh, we, we we asked for the data. The gym 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 people were saying, "Well, can you show us the data yeah. that shows so that we can understand why we have to close?" We asked for it, and all we all we received from the Ministry of Health was three studies from Chicago, from Illinois, uh, Missouri, and I think California. Nothing mm -hmm. locally. I'm sure they have it locally. Just share it with us. Yeah. Well, you the point you also made in your column was that um, I forget who it was that said it, but they're just trying to get more people. To get their vaccine cards, they're oh, just trying to up yeah. that number. That right? was the chief, uh, the chief medical medical health officer for Vancouver Coastal. So the the, the top doctor in Vancouver Coastal Health uh, in September during a Zoom virtual staff meeting, she said someone asked about the the, the vaccine card and about unvaccinated uh, workers, and she said right there, she said the reason for the vaccine card going into restaurants is not because we're, we're afraid of transmission. She says it hardly it hardly happens there. Yeah. The reason was to convince get other people, you know push them to get vaccinated. It was a big, big announcement, a big reveal by her. And I'm not sure why it didn't get more play in the press because it, 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 she was saying this is the reason for it. I'm not saying it's a bad reason. I'm just saying be honest about it. Then. Yeah. Say, yeah. you know, you've taken away your, all, all your treats. In Quebec, they, uh, they extended the vaccine card to, um, to, to liquor stores and cannabis shops. And that day, they had a record number of people going to get vaccinated. So, I mean, you might you may disagree with that, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with it. Whatever it takes to get them vaccinated, mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. But just admit it. Just be transparent. That's all I'm saying. Nightclub still battling. We got our man, the socialite king himself, Michael Potestio, to look into that more in the last week. Click. First off, um, City Council met earlier this week behind closed doors with BC Housing and it comes in advance of a meeting next week with BC's Attorney General David Eby, who's also responsible for housing. Um, Council will also be debating a motion by a trio of councillors that aims to improve uh, the way in which shelter planning occurs in our community. So we'll be watching, watching that story for sure. Another story uh, that is, was on my desk this week got a copy of the um, recommendations report written by mediators at the center of a labor dispute um, at Highland Valley Copper Mine. It's a significant employer in our area. Uh, more than a thousand workers are affected. And essentially the report outlines how wages are the main sticking point between the union, the steel workers, which represents uh, the workers at Highland Valley and tech, the company that owns the mine. So um, the mediators have put forward a settlement uh, trying to resolve the, the, the butting of heads there. And we're going to see later this week whether the uh, union members vote to ratify that agreement. Um, another story on my desk has been um, a lawsuit two lawsuits that have been filed against a cannabis farm uh, in the Monty Lake area. They're alleging that the company, which is owned by uh, well-known cannabis resident Ryan Scorgi, 
former uh, Chamber of Commerce president, Rotarian uh, TRU professor. And the, the companies are alleging that that company, uh, that his pot uh, farm owes them money. So we're following that story. Hey guys, so the big story in the newspaper this week that I helped work on was the ever-changing status of COVID-19 restrictions in BC. We got an update from Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry on the restrictions that came down on December 22nd. Uh, we learned that gyms and fitness centers are going to be allowed to reopen on the 20th. And, but unfortunately, nightclubs are going to uh, still be ordered to remain closed until February 16th. So I reached out to a nightclub owner here in town, uh, David Pop Johnson of the Blue Grotto. Uh, unfortunate for, for nightclub owners uh, like Dave there is, is just this whole situation, really. It goes beyond just this one extension here. Uh, nightclubs and, and bars have been closed pretty much the majority of the last two years of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, for Dave, it's meant that, you know, you have these restrictions on business. Meanwhile, in 2021, his, his rent went up and his insurance went up. You know, so those expenses don't go down, uh, but the business has. So it's, uh, it's a really unfortunate and precarious time. It's really interesting just to get that perspective. Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> trade deadline story any yeah. thoughts on, on what the Blazers did you think they accomplished their goal yeah I think I think uh, they're one of if not the busiest team I mean uh, I think the team that really uh, showed that they're going for the for the for the gold is Edmonton yeah. Oil Kings they have what five world juniors yeah. on that team now so yeah. and they got the, the player from Vancouver I think it's I think it's I think um, it, at the very least it showed that they're not being complacent yeah and uh, as as Kluston says um, their recent challenges showed that they have a depth problem and they have to address it, yeah. and I think they have. I think the Western Conference is pretty much wide open, so I think they accomplished their goal. You've probably got uh, Seattle, Everett, Portland, Kamloops, Kelowna, and that makes, to me, there's no reason why the Blazers can't come out of the West. Yes. It's when you get to the East. Yeah, how, you've got how, how good are they? Winnipeg and Edmonton. And um, they wanted to have, going into the playoffs, some more depth and experience. They did that. They got a big body in this Drew Englot guy, 19-year-old. And the big one was Toporowski, so yeah. they, they bring him in, and he replaces a lot of the scoring that they lose in, in Josh Piller. Yeah. And uh, I want to talk about him a little bit, because I'm getting messages, uh, private messages on Twitter and I on got Facebook. Two. I got two myself. Yeah. Um, wondering what's actually going on with Josh Piller, because the Blazers traded him away. He's one of their best players. He's one of the top forwards in the league. He's an NHL-drafted player. Yeah. Private medical situation. He's got a private medical situation, so he's back home in Mormon, and uh, he's going to be hopefully playing for Saskatchewan. Too. Yeah. yeah, and I think people kind of pick at us and 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 wonder, you know, what, what's what's really going on here? Why aren't you telling us what's going on? I think in this situation, it's a private, it's a medical. private medical situation. Yeah. It's not um, some kind of COVID side effect conspiracy. No. It's not he's in trouble with the law and they're covering it up. It's great that Saskatoon stepped up and, and they did the deal because um, in, in the end, he's a kid and his health matters. From a business side, because next year with Memorial Cup, it does also kind of hurt them. You want to have the most possible drafted players on your roster, but I don't think it's a, it's a coup de grace thing for them. I think they're still in a good spot. They've got a ton of drafted kids on their team. They're gonna have a great Memorial Cup bid. Yep. And I think they handled themselves well enough at the deadline this year to, to make themselves one of the top teams in the West. And the and the big mystery, and I think it's kind of neat, is they don't play the East this, this year at all. Not, not once. It's like like we mentioned before, it's like the old baseball where you, the teams don't meet till the championship. So yeah. you can watch all the film you want, but if you've never played them, they play different style. Uh, they have different depth. So you, you're right. It could be, it could be, they could be hitting juggernauts or they could hold their own against Edmonton and Winnipeg. That's, that's, that's what's interesting yeah. about the, uh, the, the non-interlocking play. But the big ticket coming in is Luke Toporowski. He's, um, he's got scoring, he's got some jam, he's got some sandpaper. I think Henry Small has some, some jam and sandpaper too. And we're going to meet him in uh, the next segment, which is last week, this week. <laughs> Uh, 
that right there is Henry Small. I actually don't personally know him. I've never met him. We've only exchanged text messages. Do you have any Henry Small? Do you know him at all? No, I only know Henry Small from, from he's Mr. Music in the Park. And, yeah. and, and for years and years and years, uh, he would send us stuff. We would do stories on it. Um, I talk to Henry occasionally for the stories. Um, we know Henry usually deeply through uh, Tara Holmes. Tara Holmes knows everybody in town. And <laughs> I think uh, she and uh, Henry, they worked together for years at, yeah. the, at the Jim Pattison uh, Broadcast Center. So Tara has a lot of good Henry stories as well. Um, but everyone knows Henry Small as Mr. Music in the Park, a uh, great musician, uh, passionate uh, booster of all things Kamloops as well. And, and I want to ask him today about his relationship with, with Stan, of, of Stan and Hank, 25 years together. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to talk to him just about where he is right now, if we can bring him in right now. I think he's in Mexico somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's a mystery. Uh, I'm in Mazatlan, Mexico. Well, Mazatlan, right across the, uh, the bay from, uh, from Cabo, right? <laughs> Yes, right yes. across from the bar. Right. What are you doing there? Uh, escaping. What are you escaping? Well, I'm playing music. It's, uh, you know, it's sunshine and, and it's beauty here. And uh, I'm grateful to, to be able to play music every night if I want to. Um, at this stage of my life, that's my passion. So uh, it was a good place to come to. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about Stan and Hank and, and 25 years together on that morning show. Uh, Stan left us in December. How have you handled his, his passing? Oh, it's been uh, an interesting uh, ride. I mean, grief, grief seems to come in waves. You know, you're okay one minute and then something triggers uh, a memory uh, or somebody saying, gee, sorry to hear about your partner or whatever, just simple things. Um, it's difficult, you know, um, you spend 25 years, 30 years with someone every morning. Um, yeah, it's, it'd be, it's a big part of my fabric of life and, um, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I loved him. Um, we had a real, uh, chemistry together, um, we had a lot of fun. We went through divorces together. We went through sicknesses together. We went through, you know, we were a married couple. Basically, um, we argued and didn't have sex. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, many, like many marriages today. <laughs> um, that was my point. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you touched on the bond right there. But how close do you become with somebody when you spend that much time on a daily basis together for that long? Yeah, it's it's part of you. Um, you know, I, I uh, uh, I'm not a religious person, but I kind of joke with him now, um, and that kind of makes me feel better. If there's a circumstance that occurs that uh, kind of reminds me of something, I'll I'll talk to him. You know, I would I I put something on Facebook, uh, a picture of him and I doing something. I have no, I I don't remember now, but I remember thinking. I, I was talking to him and I'm saying, geez, I post your picture up here. You died and you're still not getting as many hits as I get for one of my pictures alone. Uh, you know, you just you talk to yourself, basically. And, and sometimes, that, you know, that helps. That helps. It's been painful. Um, I lost a couple of people the same week. So it, it was kind of like a double whammy uh, sort of thing. But I love Stan and... and uh, I just carry with, you know, carry him with me. That's all. That's the best I can do at this point. What was it that clicked with you two as far as what you had together on the air? You know, I compare it to music in a way. Um, you can play with a lot of people. I played with a lot of people in my life. It really didn't matter how good or, or they were at music there was a certain intangible kind of chemistry that occurred and uh it was the same with stan i mean the moment that i met him um we laughed and and we had this instant and in, you know you can't explain it you just you you have that with certain people I read a quote from you that said you were actually completely different in the lives that you that you led i guess what did you mean by that and how are you different um, I mean, my life has been uh, the life of a traveling musician. And 
you have uh, uh, you kind of get conditioned to things being transitory. Uh, you're always in a state of transition. Your family's in a band, and then suddenly there is no band, and you have to make a family with another band, and and so you learn a sense of uh, impermanency, um, which doesn't do well with normal life. <laughs> But with Stan, there was just something that, uh, you know, I call it some kind of intervention of some kind. I don't know. We just seemed to click. And we had our times where we disagreed. He'd call me a conspiracy theorist. And, <laughs> you know, I'd call him a, an ass. And, you know, it would be on. But, but everything that we did, the beauty of that was we were very open on the air. We were just two guys that basically talked about our lives and how similar, even though we had different backgrounds and different, you know, we, we were everyday people. And I think people related to that. We were not afraid to expose our uh, idiocy or, you know, our shortcomings, whatever, you know. Um, we talked about marriage. We talked about uh, every, everything that normal people do. You know, I, God, I... I would get on management on the air. Yeah. Um, and of course, people would say, yeah, I don't like my boss either, right, or, or, or whatever. So there was always this kind of connection that Stan and I had that kind of transferred to the public. How often were you in touch with him after the show ended? And did you know that he'd become so, so sick? And were you able to, to talk with him during, during his sickness in that time? Uh, one of my regrets. Um, he, you know, when, once he went into ICU, there was very little communication. I talked more to uh, his daughter and his uh, wife uh, to see what was going on, because each of them had a kind of a different perspective. Um, yeah, it, it was very difficult. I couldn't go and see him. Um, and, um, yeah. Yeah. Do you, mean, do you feel like there there were things left unsaid that you wish you got to say to him? Yeah, of course. And I think that happens with uh, most people. Um, it's difficult. You don't expect, um, you know, we're funny. Our society is very funny that way. We don't address death as uh, we're never prepared for it somehow. You know, even if somebody's really sick, uh, he, was, he was up and down. And, you know, it was like he would get somewhat better and then uh he wasn't better and you know it, it so i didn't you know somehow in the back of my brain uh what's left of it um i expected him to to be better um you know he was double vaxxed i thought okay he's compromised but stan was a pretty strong guy and uh right to the end i i expected that he would recover and it wasn't until about the last week uh, that I realized that chances were he wasn't coming out. Well, what would you say to him if he was here now? I'd call him an ass. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, our relationship is our relationship. It doesn't go away uh, as long as I'm breathing. So um, I would just say that I, I, I loved him, which I, I did say, and um, thanks for being part of my life for so long. That's nice, yes. Is there anything you wanted to share just before you go about Stan? Anything I didn't ask you that you just wanted to, to get out there? Well, he, I have to say, he was the kindest, most good-natured man, um, which served me well because I'm not. And so there was that <laughs> yin and yang. <laughs> you know, the yin and yang. Yeah. And I was very comfortable playing the the well i almost used the bad word the heel. um yeah i you know i was the johnny carson he was the ed mcmahon kind of guy he had the most wonderful laugh and he was the most as i said so good natured um you know he 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 wouldn't hurt a fly and and uh when we first started doing radio uh, management was somewhat down on Stan and 
And I said, um, Stan, let's just have fun. And if we have fun, just like music, if we have fun, the audience will have fun. And he was just a, he was just a beautiful guy. I mean, he, I never heard him say anything bad about anybody. Yeah. Uh, I would do that, but you know, he, he, he just was, what can you say? He was just a very kind, good natured guy who had the best laugh. I mean, you can't help but laugh when you hear Stan laugh. That's the way I want to remember him. I don't, I get sad, that's for sure. But I also, uh, it gives me great joy to know that I could spend that much time with someone uh, who was such a great guy. That was going to be my last question, just how much does it mean to you to have had that relationship in your life? I mean, a lot of people never never have anything that, that close. <laughs> well, um, first of all, he was responsible uh, for getting me on the air. Um, so, you know, those 25 years, and in the beginning, I had no idea. I, you know, I'd done interviews and stuff like that when I was playing as a musician, but radio i mean i i thought what the hell am i gonna do on radio you know i don't have a hi how are you kamloops is beautiful you know that kind of stuff and i didn't you know so it really helped me um and i owe this to stan totally um i was able to talk about my life and stories of rock and roll and the people that i met and uh stuff that I would never sit around and say to anybody because they, you know, what's the point? But on radio, uh, there was, it, it brought out something, you know, I had all these memories and like I said, people that I met, played with and met socially, you know, I smoked a joint with Ringo and John Lennon's date, you know, Whoa. these kind of things, <laughs> you know. You know, oh, is that off? Whatever. No, I love it's, that. That's, that's there's nothing. It's wrong. legal now. It's no, it's fine. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Any, we should do a, uh, We should do a part two, just talking about that kind of <laughs> yeah, stuff. Come back next oh, week. Oh yeah. God, <laughs> uh, I got a ton of those. But you know, it, it, stuff that you wouldn't just say to somebody in Kamloops that you know without you know, sound comes across like uh, you're bragging or something. But on radio, it's perfect because he. He and he he was very good at. I think I've lost you. Have I lost you? No, <laughs> you're there. You're there. Yeah. All I could see is me now, and it's not a good sight. <laughs> no, um, you're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it, it allowed me to talk about, you know, everybody from Sonny and Cher to Ringo to Jeff Beck to, you know, a lot of the the every song that came on. There was a connection. It made me realize that my life was a lot better than I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yep. and uh, so it, that whole radio thing was not only uh, wonderful because of Stan, it was wonderful for me because I could actually talk about my life in a way that I probably never would have. The next time you come on, we're just going to ask you about stories about smoking doobies with Ringo and, yeah. and anything else like that. But Absolutely. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Andy. And yeah, let's talk again. For sure. I'm I'm fu I'm full of it, and I'm lonely down here in Mexico. So <laughs> love it. I could I could talk for hours. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, your thoughts on 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 the interview there? No, it was nice. It was uh, nice to hear that his his thoughts on Stan. We had those in our story. CFJC had a story. Everyone had a story uh, when Stan died. Um, heartfelt and yeah. uh, good guy. I don't, I, I don't like hearing the part about not, you know, him not not being able to talk to him when he was going out, you know, and having things left unsaid. Because, I mean, well, you, you've been in the situation. And that's, everyone's been in that situation. I mean, everybody. Um, and, and it was the circumstances. No one could visit him because of the COVID. Yeah. He was in ICU. But, um, but I think everybody, even if you spend 24 hours with someone you love and they die, you're still going to have things you want to tell them. So that's, that's normal. It's part of the grieving process. Interesting thing he mentioned, he said, we're not, we don't know how to do death well, and that's true, because we try to avoid it, right? We avoid the big elephant in the room. We're the only species, as far as I know, that know we're going to die, and we're very poor yeah. <laughs> at, 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 at realizing that and dealing with it, because yeah. um, 
maybe ego gets in the way. I don't know. It's weird. We're going to leave you on those uh, positive, positive notes today. That was episode 30, by the way. 133 mm -hmm. subscribers on YouTube as of uh, last night. We've got our title sponsor still hanging with us, New Leaf Produce Market. That was the last day for Cold Control Mechanical, so thanks for coming on board. My guys, Vinny and Dustin, we thank Lee's Music, Mike, Bonnie, Greg, too. Uh, and also Scott Finley and the Grand Ones for the music. For Chris Folds, I'm Marty Hastings. We'll see you last week.